It's a little different this morning. Normally, Ann is the one that welcomes everybody before I get to welcome everybody again. But as everybody knows, she had surgery a couple of weeks ago, and the doctor said that he thinks she needs one more week before she comes back to preach. So she'll, you know, God willing, she'll be back with us next week. But uh, we we are in for a special treat today. We have a a guest pastor that's going to speak. But I will ask Till if she will come up and share our parish concerns. Good Sunday morning, everyone. Isn't it great to be in God's house? Yes? Okay. Um, as we enter this new week in Lent, we have worship and event offerings for spiritual practices. This Wednesday, our guest speaker is Reverend Chris Hanley, Executive Director of Helping Florence Flourish. Before the service with Reverend Hanley at 12 o'clock in the sanctuary, please join us for the Prayer and Holy Communion service in the chapel at 11.30. More information about this and lunch is on the cover of your order of worship. After supper on Wednesday night, we have the annual Pinewood Derby as well as a book talk, Methodists and Moonshiners by Catherine Smith in the Spears Fellowship Hall. Be sure to register online today for supper if you can join us beforehand. The children have a progressive dinner this week. The Bible studies continue, and I ask that you be in prayer for our confirmants as they journey to Epworth, by the sea for their confirmation retreat. This is an extremely significant part of their confirmation preparation for joining the church on April 21st. Please pray for the adults that all will be safe and especially that their hearts and minds will be touched during that experience. Please be sure to go online and sign up for our e-news that goes out every week along with tidings from Thomas. Also, the March Under the Dome is now available for you to see what has been going on and what is coming up in this life in Christian community. Mike, I think there's some back there, right? Okay. Finally, I ask that you be in prayer for the family of Betty Searcy, who passed away this weekend. The memorial service will be here at Central at 2 o'clock with visitation beforehand. Now, as we hear the beautiful prelude to our service... I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship together. Good, let's get everyone to stand as we sing our creed this morning. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in life eternal, I believe in the virgin birth, I believe in the saints communion, and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. I believe in life ever after. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, please. 
Diddy-do-do-do The crimson stain He washed it white as snow Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and thy law Spot and build a heart of stone. Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as. When before the throne I stand and am complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid all Crimson stain, he washed in white and snow. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. life up from the dead Cause Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back.
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You may be seated. You know, um, as most of you know that we're here last week, I was out of town and Greg was out of town. And we, um, as far as me, we took a, a group of kids to San Diego, South Florence's Chamber Choir to San Diego to do a concert tour of several different places out there. And um, I didn't realize it till we got there, but Sunday morning, um, the choir actually led worship for a church on Coronado Island. And when I walked in the door, um, the way that they had the church designed, there was a skylight right above the cross that was hanging on the back wall. And it's like the sun was right in the right spot at the right time as I was walking in the door. And you're talking about, you hear people say something breathtaking. That, that was truly, I just had, it, it kind of stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, wow. And you know, that's, it's like the sun was shining on the cross just like in that right moment that it just, it filled me. And, you know, that's, that's what all of us should, should strive towards, to be led towards that cross and, and just have that feeling.
time together in worship, we express our gratitude for the countless blessings you bestow upon us each and every day. Lord, we ask for your divine guidance as we navigate the challenges of life. Grant us wisdom to discern your will and strength to follow in your path. May the words spoken and the beautiful songs that are sung in this service be a sweet melody in all of our hearts, drawing us closer to you. In our fellowship, let love and understanding abound. Help us cultivate a spirit of unity, compassion, and support within our church community. May we all show kindness to one another. May the scriptures inspire us to live with a purpose, reflecting your love and grace in our daily lives. In the name of our Jesus Christ, we pray the Holy Spirit moves among each of us. Bless us, our Methodist church, our leaders, and every member and guest present today. May our worship be a blessing to you, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Now we'll pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if the children want to go with Miss Lauren to Children's Church, she is heading towards the door. And everybody else, get up and, and grab you a snack. Give somebody a hug. Fix yourself something to drink. And for guests, there's coffee and everything over here. Feel free to help yourself, and we'll be back in a few minutes.
before before we get move forward in our service, Miss June just asked if we can get some volunteers for help breaking everything down and putting everything back in the in the closet this morning. Our normal crew that helps is all out of town, and so it'll just be me and Miss June and these, these couple of people you see right up here. But the, the more to help, the the quicker we can get it done, and I know Miss June will appreciate it. You know, we, um, from, I was out of town, so I'm not sure, but when I got back in town, and I knew that probably by Wednesday or Thursday that, um, that Ann wasn't going to be here this morning, so but we had already had our song submitted on what we were going to do this week, and uh, then we had a new preacher, and I was like, oh, I hope the songs are going to kind of line up with what she's going to be doing, but you, you don't ever know, and uh, she said, when me and her talked this week, she sent me some messages and some, she said, take my life and let it be. That, that's one I think would be a great song for the message. Little did she know that was already in the plan. It was already printed in the, um, in order of worship to be done. So God must have had his hand in it all along. Take my life and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hand. Then let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages from Thee Filled with messages from Thee Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet each treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. And at this time, I asked her to write up a little bit of something about herself so I could introduce her because I had never met her. And then come to find out, she's a member of Central United Methodist Church. But at this time, I'm going to ask Jeannie Swanson to come up and give us our message. She is now the chaplain at the Methodist Manor. It's good to see everyone this morning. How are you? I was telling June that the last time that I was in this place was I was teaching a Sunday school class, uh, the Sarah Blanton class, and it was full middle of COVID. And we might have had maybe a dozen, 15, and then each week picked up a little bit at a time. And it's wonderful to be here in front of you today and to see so many people. We serve a wonderful God. And God is among us this day. Amen.
So as we mark this second Sunday of Lent, and we note that the month of March is now coming upon us so quickly, we begin to feel this transition, to transition into spring. We see the pollen now has started to dust the air. We're not so happy with that, but it's a necessary thing. Our weeping willow that Dan and I planted a couple of years ago that we nourished until it, it had roots of its own, it's now starting to bud. Daffodils are starting to shoot up out of the ground. Dogwoods are starting to bloom. It is such a good feeling to know that there are warmer days ahead. Now we're not yet to the point of opening swimming pools, but leaves are starting to unfurl. March Madness is coming up soon. And we sense that there is a change in the air. All of this to remind us that we are at the close of one thing, and we are at the beginning of another. So too do we find Jesus' disciples in our morning scripture. They are also in a transition, a transition from what they think they know to what they will actually be. And they're also in a bit of a, a physical transition. They've been moving from place to place as they walk with Jesus. Recently, they'd passed through Genesaret and the region of Tyre, and they've left footprints along the Sea of Galilee, and they've stayed shortly in Bethsaida. And now they're walking into the outskirts of Caesarea Philippi, a city, a capital city of sorts, named by Herod's son Philip in honor of the emperor Caesar. Now thus far, the traveling conversation has been light. But as they approach the villages of Caesarea Philippi, which is markedly different from any other place they've been, Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say I am? And they answer, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Still others think you're one of the prophets. And Jesus takes this in. But who do you say I am, he asks. He wants to know. And Peter, always Peter, the one who steps in first, says, we know you are the Messiah. Out of that, I imagine the conversation more quiet and thoughtful as they move on. As they move on into a city, a city that celebrates not only Caesar and the Greek god Pan, but also at a place that cherishes nature and waterfalls and rock faces and natural caves. One of those natural caves is supposed to be the pathway to the underworld of Hades. And so it is here that Jesus the Messiah and his disciples gather and they rest as they're traveling south toward Galilee and eventually Jerusalem. It's here, a place that seemingly touts both good and evil, that Jesus offers his followers a preview of the next chapter of the story. I read now from the eighth chapter, the Gospel of Mark. Now hear the word of the Lord. Then Jesus began to teach them, that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and then be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside then and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And he called the crowd with his disciples, and he said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forget and forfeit their life? Indeed, 
What can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes into the glory of his Father and the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. When Jesus finishes speaking, I imagine there to be this stunned silence. And then everybody at once is whispering questions, and they're thinking out loud, and they're saying, if you save your life, you'll lose it. If you lose your life, you'll save it. Take up your cross. Wait, did he just say, take up your cross? And then I hear them say out loud, Lord, tell us again, Jesus. We know you're the Messiah, the anointed one. Tell us, why do you have to suffer? Especially at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes. As the Messiah, God's anointed king, are you not going to rule over your people? It's a fair question that many others are going to ask in the upcoming days. And then, of course, it's Peter. Jumps in, feet first. Peter, he calls Jesus aside, and with a challenge in his voice that he wants God to hear, he says, may God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. And to this, Jesus answers quickly. And as he speaks, he looks both into the eyes of Peter and into the group that's around him. Get behind me, Satan. Peter, you do not see as God sees. And we can only imagine that Peter, the rock upon which Jesus is building his church, Peter crumbles a little bit with his scolding. And then he doesn't speak again in the scripture. You know, if there's one character in the Gospels that most closely resembles many of us, it's probably Peter. The one who jumps in without thinking. The one who believes passionately with all his heart. The one who doesn't always think before he speaks. The one who puffs up with praise and then hangs his head when he's done something wrong. He's the one that tells Peter that he'll follow him forever, but then will deny him when the growing gets tough. I'm guessing that we can all see a little of ourselves in Peter. Yet through the harsh words and maybe even through frustration, it is clear that as the story unfolds, Jesus loves Peter. He loves Peter for his humanity. He loves him for his boldness. He loves him that he wants to serve. But Peter is quiet now. And Jesus uses this time to describe to his disciples more about what is to follow. And in this, he offers them questions and answers to their unspoken questions. This to include, we don't understand, Jesus, why must you suffer? What can we do to help you? You are the Messiah, the anointed one. What can we do? And to this, Jesus responds, follow me. But know that anyone who wants to follow me must first deny themselves and then pick up their cross. For those who want to save their life will lose it. But if anyone loses their life for my sake or the sake of the gospel, they will save it. Now, this is not an easy concept to understand. Jesus knows this. But what Jesus wants them to hear is in that last verse that says, if anyone loses their life for my sake or the sake of the gospel, they will save it. He wants them to hear that promise of salvation. And to this, I imagine the disciples scratching their head in wonder. Follow me, Jesus says. Take up your cross 
and follow me. Now this line, take up your cross, now that the disciples understand. Crucifixion in the first century in Jesus' day was common. Roman soldiers often crucified political and religious dissenters. Each disciple would probably have known someone who was punished this way. They would no doubt have been frightened by Jesus' asking, take up the cross, follow me. But Jesus offers this to soothe the disciples' worry. He says, I ask you to follow me not as a sacrifice to the image of a cross. I ask you to sacrifice for my sake and for the sake of the gospel. And for that, nothing but real devotion will do. Have no doubt that if you follow me, your sense of self and self-preservation will be challenged in the journey ahead. And so as the disciples are pondering this, I imagine Jesus sharing this analogy. There can be no halfway on this journey with me, Jesus says. This is an all or nothing mission that you have been called for. It's a little like swimming. If you keep your feet on the bottom of the pool and never push off, you'll never know how to swim. And when the water starts getting deep around you and your feet are still planted on the bottom, you'll find yourself with the choice to swim or to drown. Because when you're in deep water, walking on the bottom is not an option. When you're in over your head, friends, you must swim. Push off, Jesus says. Follow me. Now, there's a lot about what Jesus has to say that the disciples can't wrap their head around. Mostly because they don't know the significance of what's going to play out in Jesus' story that's coming out. They can't possibly know where all of this is going. They can speculate about taking up the cross and following Jesus and what all that means. But the part about Jesus being killed and raised from the dead on the third day... How can they possibly understand that? So at this pivotal transition in Jesus' way forward, Jesus, as the named Messiah, is simply asking his disciples to remain with him, to follow in faith, to come and see. Come and see where this new season of understanding will lead them. The reward being that in taking this journey, They will see God who is made known in Jesus. They will see the God who is good. They will see the God who is paving the way for all to know the kingdom of heaven. For those of us who follow Jesus today, he makes the same promise. Except we don't have to wait for the story to play out. We know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the one sent, and he is the one anointed. We know that his suffering on the cross was for us. We know that Jesus died on that cross, that we would know grace, forgiveness, and salvation. We know that on that cross, Jesus brought the kingdom of heaven into this world. But still... As in the scripture, Jesus asks us for commitment. We too are asked to take up the cross with all of its risks and all of its rewards. Now to be a cross bearer is to make a decision about who or what we align ourselves with. If we agree to carry the cross, we have to be prepared for where that cross is going to lead us. Because that may very well be somewhere uncomfortable. Because if Jesus' mission was to feed the hungry, or to seek out and save the lost, if his mission was to help the needy, 
to tend to the poor, to preach the gospel in places where the gospel had never been heard, then that is now, without doubt, our calling too. If we agree to carry the cross, we must not only be willing, but be glad to follow where it leads. And therein lies Jesus' calling upon our hearts. Because like the disciples, to follow Jesus, we have to do everything in full trust of Him. And some days, friends, that's hard. It was hard for the disciples of the first century, and it's hard for us today. But then maybe, maybe we're not quite looking at that right. Because in full faith of Jesus, we have the courage now to push off from the bottom of the pool. In full faith of Jesus, we have the inspiration to preach the gospel where the gospel isn't heard. In faith of Jesus, we have the capacity to love our neighbors who look and who act differently than we do. And then we realize that through our faith in Jesus, anything is possible. And that he uses us to make those things possible. Through Jesus, by our human hands, the hungry are fed. Through Jesus, the poor are cared for. Through Jesus, the unloved are loved. And all that is asked of us is that we simply take up our cross of faith and follow. Follow not by trying to walk in deep water, but rather by following our Jesus who teaches us to push off and swim. Follow me, said Jesus. Follow me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dearest Lord, we we thank you for this day, the day that you have made. We thank you for this fellowship and for this music. And especially, Lord, we thank you for Jesus who not only invites us to walk with him, but then also teaches us along the way. And now, Almighty God, as we join together in prayer, we thank you for your blessings. And we ask, Lord, humbly, that you continue to watch over us. And we lift up to you this day the concerns of this church and this church family. We pray for those who are in seasons of struggle. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for those who know the heaviness of grief. We lift to you those who are in need of healing. And we especially offer to you those who are lost in this world and who need to find their way. Show us, Lord, how to be in your service to help these, our brothers and sisters. Lead our hearts now into your work. Inspire us to follow in faith. Teach us, teach us to be your disciples. For we are yours, Lord, always and forever. And may you continue to hold us tightly as we search for understanding in the words and the teachings of your Son. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able.
is how to run. I am a sinner If it's not one thing It's another Caught up in words Tangled in lies But you are a savior And you take brokenness aside And make it beautiful Beautiful Will you call me child when I tell you lies? Cause all I know is how to cry. I am a sinner If it's not one thing It's another Caught up in words Tangled in lies But you are a savior And you take brokenness aside And make it beautiful Beautiful I am a sinner If it's not one thing it's another Caught up in words Tangled in lies But you are a savior And you take brokenness aside And make it beautiful Beautiful And make it beautiful Beautiful You make it beautiful Beautiful. And now, if all is said and said and spoken, and we have praised our Lord Jesus, may the grace of Jesus the love of our almighty God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you this day and always. Amen.